Welcome to the first episode of Solo Africa Overland. This is going to be a beautiful trip through Africa. Uh, it's a long life dream. I finally made it real. And with this truck behind me, my plan is to drive around Africa the next months, years, whatever it takes. There is not a plan itinerary, only planned thing is starting point is Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, because I bought the car there, I kitted it out there and it is the starting point from Southern Africa. My idea is to travel following the eastern route to the Mediterranean, but recent events in different countries probably will make it impossible. So I don't make an itinerary plan way ahead, only probably like for next month, because countries come with uh, new visa requirements or they have uh, internal problems or they have terrorism or war and you know those kind of things that you plan an itinerary and you have to totally change it. I know a few people that had uh, everything planned day by day almost and suddenly they have to change everything and instead of following the eastern road to follow the western road and so I don't I don't think I'm going to plan way ahead but what I want to do is dedicate a lot of time to each country this is not a highlight trip um, for most of my adult life I've been uh, taking people to other countries and that took me to visit more than a hundred countries already but when you only have uh, your holiday time to visit a country you just go to the most interesting places where everybody goes and now in this trip what I want to do is I want to go to those less known places and I want to know as much as possible this is not just a safari trip, this is not just a driving trip. I'm, I'm not going to do a, um, a Cape to Cairo because I want to do the route. No, this is not my intention. My intention is travel from country to country and take as much time as needed and as much time as the visa extended by that particular country will allow me. Some countries will give you a visa for just 30 days, some others will give you for two months, three months, it'll depend. But I don't want to rush, I want to have a good time. I'm going to try to know everything, the most important things, the least important things, and change the plans on the road. And if I talk to anyone who has told me to go to some place because it's interesting, I don't mind to take a detour and go there a couple of days. Uh, this is going to be a long series of videos. Uh, don't expect like a 10 minutes country and then move on because the trip is not going to be like that. I'm going to tell you what I'm not interested in. Uh, I'm not really into uh, African towns and cities. I know some of them and it's not what I'm looking for. I'm interested in nature, landscape, culture. This is what I'm what I'm looking for. So I will try to go as, to as many national parks and reserves as possible. We'll try to know the culture of the country, visiting the people of the country, but not the people living in towns, but the people living the traditional way as much as possible. Of course, people living the traditional way nowadays is almost impossible. And uh, even if you go to the remotest village that will pull a cell phone and uh, so that is very complicated to find but i'll do my best and i also am interested in landscape and the scenery is very important for me i love beautiful places i love to, uh, i don't mind to drive whatever it takes to go to a place which is stunning i like going to remote places to deserts to places where there's no one around. I don't like to take highways. I don't like to take the, the bad roads. It doesn't mean I'm gonna take a bad road just for the sake of it. But if I can, I prefer to take back roads. And even though it will take me more time, then I have the chance to uh, see the real country. And um, 
I like to go off the beaten track and uh, this is my idea. The track that you can see behind is ready to be self-sufficient. It means that I don't need to connect to the grid for power. I don't need water because I have the water tank. And basically I don't need the services that a campsite provides. Sometimes uh, it's necessary, especially if you want to be inside parks or reserves, or if you're in a place where there's a lot of people around close to town, you don't want to just camp anywhere. But my idea is do wild camp as much as I can, because I like to, to feel that I'm in nature and uh, it's not that I hate being in a campsite because I don't, but uh, my idea of being in nature is uh, it's different. So I hope you like the idea. I hope you like what I'm proposing. And uh, if you like it, uh, you're welcome to join me and uh, drive around Africa with me. Let's get to it. Right now, I'm leaving Johannesburg. This is the starting point of my trip because I bought this car in Johannesburg and the uh, car is almost ready. But first thing you have to learn is when you come to Africa, you have to be patient. And not everything goes according to plan. And if you think you're gonna do this right away, come by the car, add everything you need, and be on the way in a few days or even a few weeks, you're probably wrong. And days turn to weeks, weeks even turn to months. So, be patient if you want to do something like this and enjoy the, your time, whatever your starting point is. The car is almost ready, it's only waiting for suspension. I needed a, an upgrade on the car suspension because it's very heavy. I bought the suspension and it was supposed to arrive in a few days. It got to Durban port, but apparently they are on strike and they don't know when the suspension is going to be here in Johannesburg. So I didn't want to wait any longer. So I decided to do a test trip through South Africa. I've been to South Africa before, but now I'm going to visit some places that I haven't been yet. I'm by no means an expert, so I'm not going to recommend what you should do, but I'm going to tell you what I did was right or if it was wrong and the things that I should change. I'm leaving the province of Gauteng, which is the smallest one of the country and where Johannesburg is located. And I'm entering the northwest province. So you can see there are not big towns around. It looks pretty rural, but the landscape hasn't changed much. How are you? What is the price of the mangoes? Thank you. Beautiful mangoes. to Kimberley to see the big hole but unfortunately yeah, today is a national shutdown day and it's going to be closed so I have two days here nothing to do I can go to a national park which is not far from here and uh, I'll spend some time there I uh, 
asked at reception if they had any campsites available but unfortunately uh, this is a very small campsite so if you plan to come here book in advance there's something about doing a game drive driving your own car while you look for animals that I truly love just driving around and looking for them is so relaxing I could do this all day and when you are lucky to find something special it's really a rush this part of the park is beautiful I haven't seen many animals yet springboks mostly but the scenery is beautiful this red soil I really love it this is a group of wildebeest mixed with springbok that's probably a water hole that's a beautiful hemsbok That is one magnificent animal. This is the Matopi picnic area. bigger and I also found more cars around the central part so I guess this is the most popular part of the park still have to go to the eastern side but um, definitely there are more animals here than at the western part if you're not a professional guide you just have to think that the animals that you're going to see is the animal that wants to be seen. But if you really want to see the animals that are difficult to find, you need to join a professional guide tour. Those guys really know where to go, and especially if they're based in the same park for a long time, they know every corner of it. So they can take you straight to, to where the animals usually are. I'm heading to the east part of the park and there is where I'm going to exit the park through the Lilydale gate and it is amazing how often the scenery changes here. Now this looks like a box of Serengeti with this open place. I'm enjoying this park pretty much it is a shame that there are no big cats here because otherwise it would be a great park. In terms of scenery, I think it's really beautiful. I heard there are buffaloes here and I'm sure there are rhinos here, both white and black. I couldn't see them yet. And there are no elephants, no leopards and no lions but I'm really enjoying it here. I think it's a good little park for one day as a day visitor or maybe two overnight if you're going somewhere else. So I finally see them, buffaloes. There, group of 30, 40 buffaloes. There's also an island there. Beautiful island.
this part of the park is just amazing. It is beautiful. These open prairies are just magnificent. I'm really loving this part of the park. I would start where I started on the other side, the west part, and I will leave this part for the end and in, during the afternoon because now with the with the sun coming down and this light it is absolutely beautiful beautiful park really I had a great time here I asked how come they don't have cats here and they told me that the uh, this is a new park and the fence is not being built yet because there are farms around they don't want to bring the cats yet because they are, there's cattle around here. So when they finish the fence, they'll expect to, to bring some predators because they are, they're afraid of overpopulation of the animals without predators. And also uh, without predators, she, she said uh, some animals can carry some diseases. So um, if it's, this is a good park now, in a few years, it's gonna be an awesome park. All set to cook dinner and spend the night here. There's no one else around, and this is what I like.